Aloha. Um, I have a couple of updates. I went to the MLD and I saw my oncologist regarding the, um, the symptoms I've had that may or may not be related to side effects of the drug I'm taking. So I will cover each of these. Um, first of all, the MLD. Uh, she was more thorough than the occupational therapist I went to, who I now find out is actually an MLD. But when I went to the first one, she didn't even have me take off my blouse. She didn't look at my breast. She said there's no way to measure the breast. Um, you know, it, it, she gave me a lot of thing, you know, she said a lot of things that, you know, even at the time I kind of wondered about that. It's not that I thought, oh, she's lying. And I, I'm still not saying, oh, she's lying, but I, it just made me wonder about her thoroughness. When I went to this new MLD, she actually, you know, she had me undress the top part. She took some measurements. Uh, it's not like she takes size measurements, but she takes measurements of certain areas of the breast. And then she gave me some of these rub down exercises or massages or whatever you want to call them. But they're a little bit different than, they're not the little circles that I had been told to do. It's more like flushing away and so then I actually have eight visits with her that Kaiser has approved so because she's not part of the Kaiser network she's off-site at a rehab facility so um, my next visit then we go into more detail um, you know, the first visit was just about her getting the information she needs and just sort of getting me started on a routine. And so, uh, you know, I, I like her a little bit better because she was more detailed. And she actually, she took longer. She took a full hour with me, whereas the previous one, I think I was out of there in half an hour. And so... I'm feeling a little bit better about this. Um, there are, I didn't bring the paperwork with me, um, there are four stages of lymphedema and it's like stage zero, one, two, and three. Zero is where there are no visible signs. Um, stage one is you start getting a little bit of swelling, uh, but when you push in on the area it springs back I think that's what it is I can't remember what they all are uh, but when you get to stage two and three it's harder to get yourself back to normal and she thinks I'm still in stage one so that's a good thing if I'm in stage one I have a chance of getting my breast down to its normal size again. However, it's something that I always have to work on and keep at um, with all of the instructions she gives me. And this is kind of a weird part. I should have like a, a lymphedema diagram, <laughs> a duct diagram, because she had a big poster that she brought out and showed the lymphedema duct or the node and the all the veins and everything and explained how they work. That's something the other one didn't do either. Um, the, the lymphedema, the node, or the, you know, the duct, the, the lymph node, oh, that's what it is, the lymph node. It, works in conjunction with the blood vessels and it helps weed out all the, the gunk out of your 
system. Um, you know, the unnatural stuff, the stuff that's bad for you, you know, it, it works with all of that. So what it does is it filters the bad stuff and then the good stuff leaves the lymph node and goes back into the bloodstream through the heart and around again. And so when you remove a lymph node or it's damaged, it can't do that. And so all the bad stuff is kind of piling up somewhere else. The, the difference though is that if blood vessels are damaged, they can be reattached and retrained to operate the way they should. The lymph node, the, the ducts and, that go to them do not retrain. Um, so you can do things, you know, like doing these things to get help get the fluid out of the breast, but then the lymph node is gonna, it's gonna go, oh, okay, we need to go that way and it'll go that way, but then it's gonna forget, and it's gonna go back to going the way it normally goes. It's not going to permanently retrain itself. So that's why you have to keep at it. It's something that I'll have to do for the rest of my life. Which, if it works, is fine. You know, I'm also, you know, all those pretty bras that I got with the insert. <sighs> Can't wear them. If you have lymphedema in the breast, one of the worst things you can do is wear an underwire bra, which is what two of the three bras that I got are. One is a molded bra, which would be okay, um, but the bras tend to, the wire cuts the circulation. So I have to go back to the sports bras. So I did go and buy another sports bra last night that is tighter and it fits better, except all they make sports bras in are dark colors. You can't find a white or a beige anywhere. At least, you know, I, I mean, I just went to Target, but you know, I don't want to put a lot of money into a bra, um, even without the lymphedema, I don't want to put a lot of money into bras. <sighs> you know, I mean, I was always buying at Walmart and buying the, you know, the, the $9.99 bra or whatever it is, um, which is probably why my bras never fit right. But this one is tighter than the other sports bras that I have. The other sports bras are more just like something to kind of keep you in place. They don't even stop the jiggle. I mean, they're just, it's sort of like wearing a bandeau. It's just like nothing. Um, I, I, but they're the kind you have to pull over your head and this one zips up the front so you can get a little bit tighter. So, that might be a key when you're looking for a bra if you have this problem. Get something that you can zip up the front or connect in the back rather than something you have to pull over your head because you'll be able to get it tighter than something you have to get over your shoulders. Um, so after my next appointment, I'll do a further update and let you know what's going on. And then yesterday I saw the oncologist and we discussed the problems I was having with the exhaustion, the pain, the back aches, um, a few other things that once, once I talked, you know, once I, my doctor had said it might be side effects of the medication, not necessarily of the chemo and the radiation, but of the medication you're on. Then I looked up the medication and I actually went through and highlighted all of the things that I've been having. And actually, there's quite a few 
side effects that I have that could be associated with this drug. Don't know yet if they are. So um, the thing I'm going to go through first the side effects that I'm having. Um, lower back or side pain, yes. Um, unusual tiredness or weakness. Sores, ulcers, or white spots in the mouth. Um, yeah, I've been chewing on the insides of my mouth a lot because they've become really soft and um, so I, mm, I do that and then I make it worse. Um, let's see, back ache, body aches or pain, hot flashes. That's kind of an iffy one. I noticed I've been getting more of them the last few months, but I am still kind of menopausal, I guess. So, you know, it's like they connected to this, they connected to that, but who knows. Increased appetite. I've been stress eating a lot and eating things like chips and cookies, which are not good. So I've gained like 10 pounds, not good. Mood or mental changes, oh God, yes. A lot of stress. Um, and so is that connected to the stress or is that connected to this? Is this causing aggravated stress that would not stress me out as much as it might if I weren't on the drug? Pain in the backs, in the back and ribs. That's where a lot of my pain is, in the back and the ribs. Runny nose, yes. Um, anxiety and confusion, anxiety definitely. Again, who knows if it's the drug or if I'm if, if the drug is emphasizing what I'm already feeling. Um, trouble sleeping, oh yes. Weight gain, back to the stress eating, um, and that's it. Um, I've also had those foot cramps and that cholinergic urticaria. The, when I, you know, the itching when I get hot and sweaty. And so um, sweating and itching of the skin are both side effects of this. I don't know if it's related. It's kind of odd that I've never had it before and it just showed up. So what my doctor is having me do is go off the medicine cold turkey. Um, if she puts me on another medication and the side effects continue, we don't know if the side effects are because of the medication and the new medication also has the side effects that, you know, I'm being affected by, or if the side effects are due to something else. If I go off the medication and don't take anything else, in its place, if the side effects stop, we know it was the medication. If they continue, then it's something else and we have to look further um, and, you know, and determine what else is causing this. So that's the reason for just going off medication altogether. This anastrozole is the drug they give you after your chemotherapy that you're supposed to stay on for, I think, five years, three years, five years. It's just one little pill a day. And she said, if you stop it for a couple of months, it's not going to affect anything. And in fact, you could stop it altogether. And it, the chances of your getting cancer again because you stopped the drug are not going to be increased that much. You know, it's a very, very small percentage. This is just sort of one of those added bonus things that they do just to help decrease the chance of another cancer. It's not take this and you won't get another cancer. It's take this and maybe you, you know, there's this much chance you won't get another cancer. Um, so I, I'm all for just going off of it and finding out what is causing these because the aches and pains, the exhaustion is just too much. 
you know, when you can't walk to your car at night after work because you are so freaking exhausted and your back hurts and you hunched over, that's when you're at a, a point in time where you have to do something. So that's where I am here. So I, we're going to give it a month and then I'll talk to my doctor again and see how you know how things are going if I'm still having any of the exhaustion the pains any of the other side effects and then we'll go from there so that is it and what I want to do is I know I've been dialoguing all of the side effects from the chemo, you know, while I was going through the chemo and the radiation and I was telling you all the side effects as I was going through them, what I want to do is sort of catalog everything and do it all in one video so that it's all in one place and I can just go through it, you know, A to Z and have everything there that I have gone through. So, wow, <clears throat> I don't know what happened there. Um, so, but that's going to take a little bit of time to do. I do still have it all written down, but just to pull it together and because it's written in different places, you know, like for each of the videos. So I have to, um, collate it and get it into one place, but that is on my to-do list <laughs> along with a million other things. So... I guess that's all I have for today, so I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.